Howdy, I'm Martellum here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the complete series of Lupin the Third, Part Two. So, I recently reviewed Lupin the Third, Part One, and in that I mentioned the fact that Lupin the Third, Part One was cancelled, and it wasn't until years later when reruns of it became popular uh, that a second series called Lupin the Third, Part Two was commissioned. And Lupin the Third, Part Two proved to be a massive success. It ran for 155 episodes. And its final episode was one of the most watched anime episodes of all time in Japan. Uh, it laid the groundwork for a lot of what the Lupin franchise would become. Uh, the many elements found in the Lupin franchise can be found here. And um, so it is an exceptionally important series. Uh, but the question is, is it good? And that's what we're going to discuss today. So let's get started with the story. So what is the story of Lupin the Third Part 2? Just like the original, we follow a character called Lupin the Third, who is a master thief. He is assisted by an expert gunslinger called Daisuke Jigen, a samurai called Goemon Ishikawa, a femme fatale named Fujiko Mine, who also acts as Lupin's love interest, uh, while they are pursued by a man named Inspector Zenagata, who has made it his life mission to capture Lupin and bring him to justice. I think it's fair to say that uh, one of the reasons that the Lupin franchise has proven to be so enduring is um, how fantastic its characters are. Lupin III himself is an extremely charming, likeable main protagonist, and his companions prove to be exceptionally endearing as well. The characters of Lupin III are absolutely fantastic. With regards to the story itself, um, this series, just like the original, is episodic, meaning that each episode is uh, standalone and features a beginning, middle and end, um, usually featuring the gang in the pursuit of some kind of treasure, facing off against some kind of uh, villain, uh, or ending up in some kind of weird, dangerous situation. However, it is interesting to note uh, that there are a couple of exceptions to that. There's a couple of part twos in this series, um, and there's also a couple of situations of uh, villains returning. In fact, the very first episode of this series actually features a villain from the original series as something that's highly unusual. It is also interesting to note that this is the series in which the stories of Lupin the Third uh, really became international. Part one of Lupin uh, was predominantly set in Japan. There were a couple of episodes set out of Japan, um, but in general it was set predominantly in Japan. Uh, in contrast, in Lupin the Third Part Two, uh, we really see them start to go to other countries. Within a few episodes, uh, we've already traveled to Brazil, Germany, Egypt, Scotland, etc. etc. Now, um, with regards to the overall quality of storytelling, while the overall quality of storytelling is still really good and really strong in this series, um, it is worth noting that it isn't quite as consistent uh, in terms of quality as the original series, which makes sense. There's 155 episodes. Not every one of them can be a masterpiece. But there are a few duds in this series. And so in terms of overall quality, um, it isn't quite as good as the original series. Um, however, there are absolutely amazing episodes and I wouldn't let that stop you from watching this series. This series is still absolutely fantastic. Now, with regards to the animation, uh, the animation was done by Tokyo Movie Shinsha, who also did the animation for the original series and is known for other series such as Detective Conan and the short films Panda Go Panda, among many others. The animation of this series is one of the most distinct aspects of it. For its time, it was exceptionally high quality, much higher quality than many of the other series produced around the time. Many very important animators in the anime industry uh, worked on this series. And it is interesting how um, the art style of the series can shift between certain episodes. In fact, there's a very famous example of that, uh, but I'll get onto that in a moment. I'm sure many will find the look and animation of this series dated. I still think it has tremendous charm, and I think it holds up really well. With regards to the music of this series, this series brought in an amazingly talented man named Yuji Ono. And Yuji Ono is basically the man uh, who established the main Lupin theme, um, as well as bringing in all sorts of amazing songs. Um, I have to say that the soundtrack for this series is far superior to the first series, and it is absolutely great that Yuji Ono was able to contribute to this series. He made such a tremendous difference to the uh, soundtrack. It's such an improvement. With regards to the voice actors, now it is interesting to note um, that there is an English dub for this series, but it is incomplete. So originally Genyon Entertainment uh, licensed this series and produced an English dub that aired on Adult Swim. Uh, however, only the first half of this series, up to episode 79, actually has an English dub. 
Uh, after that, there is no English dub, it's just the Japanese uh, track. However, it is interesting to note that there are two later episodes. Um, these two later episodes were directed by Hayao Miyazaki that had English dubs um, created for them by a company called Streamline. And these dubs are included as extras uh, in the last box set for those episodes. So there is English dubs for them, but they're kind of more of an extra than anything else. My full recommendation for you is to watch the Japanese. Not only is the Japanese available for the whole series, um, but I do believe that the Japanese is superior to the English dub. The voice actors involved are extremely talented. It is worth noting that uh, compared to the original series, uh, that Fujiko Mine and Goi Manishikawa are voiced by different people. However, I have to say that these voice actors are tremendously talented, Eiko Masayama and Makio Inoue. So uh, I do think that the Japanese cast does an amazing job with this series. And I fully recommend that you watch this in Japanese. Uh, this series was released by Discotech Media uh, in America, just like the original series. And just like the original series, um, even though it says Region 1 on these DVDs, it has no problem running on my Region 2 player. I think uh, Discotech Media did an amazing job with this series. This was released across four box sets, with close to 40 episodes um, in each box set. These box sets feature commentaries from uh, Lupin experts, and I have to say that the commentaries are absolutely fantastic. In fact, my criticism of the commentaries actually comes from the fact that there are too few of them. When I first got the first box set of uh, Lupin Third Part Two. There was three audio commentaries on the first disc and an audio commentary on the second disc. I enjoyed them so much that I was eagerly anticipating more commentaries, but by the time I'd finished the box set, I realized that those four commentaries was all that was available. So I found that to be quite a shame. In fact, as the uh, box sets continued on, uh, we get fewer and fewer uh, commentaries. The final box set, in fact, only has two commentaries, uh, both of which are the uh, Hayao Miyazaki episodes. Um, so I do think the lack of commentaries overall is a shame, but the quality of the commentaries themselves are fantastic. There's a huge amount of information. They're really worth listening to, in contrast to so many other commentaries for anime series. These feature the liner notes um, that the original box set had. Uh, however, the liner notes aren't quite as detailed as in the original box set. And in fact, there are a few episodes that actually don't get any liner notes at all. Uh, even so, the liner notes are still highly informative and it's worth reading them uh, as you go through. In addition, as I mentioned before, in the final box set, uh, they include the streamlined dubs for those two Hyao Miyazaki episodes as extras. So overall, I think the quality of this release is great. Would I have loved more commentaries? Of course I would have. But that doesn't take away from the fact that these discotheque media releases of Lupin the Third Part Two are absolutely fantastic and I cannot recommend them enough. I think this is such a great release. So overall, what are my thoughts on Lupin the Third Part Two? I think this series is excellent. Um, it's not as consistently brilliant as the original series, uh, but there are still so many fantastic episodes in these box sets that I have no hesitation to recommend this. I think it is such a fantastic series that everyone should watch it and you will find it highly enjoyable. That's my review for Lupin the Third Part Two. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye bye.